Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald of the Executive Mansion in Springfield, just tossing a buckeye and looking at what's new here at the, on the grounds. We come here maybe once a year at a different time of the season to see what's new and there's always something really interesting here. Like I'm looking at this, at this granite walkway that you can see beside me here. These are all new stones and what they've done is they've built this walkway all around the periphery of the grounds here so that the tourists who come in here can uh, have a nice walkway to see what's new. We'll see some new statuary that's down there uh, and a new garden down there. But right now, Harry Lewis, you're, you're the horticulturalist here. We're standing in front of one of the newer things here, and that is a chicken coop, one of the things you might not expect to see on the executive grounds. That seems to be our number one question from everybody. Why would you have chickens here? <laughs> and one of the reasons is they are here to be our composters. We take all the leaves that we have from the trees and put in here for bedding, and they scratch it, they peck it, they put their manure in it, and by the time they're done, we've got this great compost that's ready to apply as a fertilizer or soil amendment for here in the garden. Now, can we get closer? Can we go inside and get we closer sure to can. these birds? We sure can. Because these aren't just any chicken. These are, these are heritage chickens. Most right? of these are heritage breeds. Yeah. Heritage breeds are breeds that were developed in this country or maybe um, even in Europe, but they're breeds that haven't been hybridized or crossbred. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people don't know that a lot of breeds of chickens were almost lost. Um, due to factory farms. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's been a big push by the Heritage Poultry Conservancy to keep these breeds. Okay, I'm going to follow you. Okay. In, and I don't want to let any of these chickens out, so we'll be very careful about how we, uh, how we get in here. I'll keep my foot in front of here, let our camera in here, and then Harry, we'll move a little bit further down the way here. There we go. Okay. And let's just take a look in here real quick. This, of course, the chicken coop is new, but this little chicken house is new too, isn't it? Um, we this, got a layer in there right you now, do. don't this we? This is a breed called Astrolarp. Um, it's a brown egg layer. They're one of the um, very best breeds for egg laying. Uh -huh. They're also dual purpose. You could use them for meat production. <laughs> now, this is interesting. Um, I, I think I lost this golf ball last week See? on the course. My, that's my Ram golf ball. What is a golf ball doing in here? A golf ball's in there for a couple reasons. One is to give them the idea initially where to lay. Um, uh -huh. Another reason they're in there is to um, thwart them from pecking their own eggs and trying to consume the egg. Mm -hmm. So if they hit that egg, or hit that golf ball, it kind of hurts on their beak. Uh huh. Okay, and we can look in look in here. We could see that she's already laid four she's or five. She's already huh? that particular oh, hen goodness, lays brown that. eggs. Uh -huh. So right now we have four eggs here. Success. And I've already collected two. So so far today, six eggs. Uh -huh. um, that particular breed would lay one of these brown eggs. Mm -hmm. um, these green egg shells are from the Americanas, which can lay um, green, blue, or pink mm -hmm. shades. Okay, I'm going to put the golf ball back. Put I don't think you ball. are you going to put the bird. You're going to collect those, or you're going to we keep will those? collect them. I'll, okay. I'll probably put them back in. You for told right me now. something interesting. I, I didn't know, but but chickens will eat their own eggs. They if you will don't gather up they and get will. them out of there. Um, you know, sometimes it can be from soft shells. Um, these shouldn't have that problem because they have layer food, which is high in calcium. They mm -hmm. have oyster shell. But once they start, they're really hard to break. So it's good if you can collect the eggs mm -hmm. frequently and kind of dissuade them. Mm -hmm. Now you, you mentioned, uh, and I'm going to kick some of this straw here, this is an example of the kind of stuff when you talk about compost, and this is breaking down continually, it is. isn't it? You know, and this you'll is, replace this when it gets broken down to where you want it, you'll get it out of here and you use just it take it all out, pile it. Um, this has a ways to go. This is straw left from the fairground, so we used it to test. Um, we probably still prefer the leaves because they um, break down quicker yeah. for us. And, and pretty soon you'll have plenty of leaves, We'll have you? plenty of leaves. I mean, you could fill this thing up three times mm -hmm. probably. Now these birds all look different. I think we're looking at one of the one of the paler ones there. Um, this breed coming over first is one of the Americanas, and she's the one that lays for us the sage green egg. Ah. This bird right here is a Rhode Island red. This one here. Uh huh. Okay, that I'm pointing and at. And she lays um, brown eggs. Uh huh. Aren't they interesting looking? And the, you saw the astral arp, mm -hmm. and then we have a Brahma, which is a white one. Yeah. Um, I wish and we she's could another scare brown her up because she's, she's usually she's pretty gorgeous. social. Yeah. Here's the astrolarp. But they, these are one. these are not your regular farm chickens. I mean, people have not seen seen these unless they've, you know, seen the heritage birds. Yeah, these yeah. are available. So these are um, dual purpose breeds. Most of these would be considered. <laughs> 
Are they getting food out of that bucket or are that they That bucket is where they get their water. Oh, it's okay. a way to have them get water mm -hmm. but not have the mess of litter in it yeah. and them dumping it over. They're called yeah. nipple waterers <laughs> and they know to um, hit those and they get yeah. a good drink. You started with nine birds and you still have nine birds. Still their longevity nine birds. is pretty good, isn't it? Oh yeah, um, a lot of the breeds will live longer than some of the hybrid types uh -huh. um, and they also tend to handle the winter temperatures yeah. better. And the, the eggs that you collect, they, they are eaten by guests at the executive mansion. The chefs use them and yeah. the guests eat them. Yeah, there's the white, there's there's the the white bird. Breed. Look at a, that, that's the Brahma. White Brahma. Uh -huh. Oh, isn't she beautiful? And she's a, a bigger bird than uh -huh. some of the others. Uh -huh. Has a peak home, mm -hmm. um, but real friendly. Yeah, well, isn't that interesting? Well, listen, Harry, I hate to take you away from your chickens, but you okay. and I have some walking to okay, do Okay, let's go. And uh, I talked about this, this granite lane, and uh, you and I are gonna take a walk. Okay. To see what else is new. That's terrific, those birds. <laughs> Harry, how many granite stepping stones? 327. You, you counted them because you probably had to lift them and put them in My place, My crew right? counted them and they claim that they did most of the work, so that's why they counted. They looked like they'd be a, a load to carry. Each one looks like it weighed 30 or 40 pounds. I'd say 40, yeah. How did you come by all these? They're perfectly the shape, the same size. How'd you get them? Um, we got them from a granite countertop producer here uh -huh. in town, and these are the cutouts from a double kitchen sink. I'll be we doggone. We also have some triangles and some rectangles and squares. That Isn't that terrific? So, so you, they, they're gratis. They came to you for free if they you could pick them free. up, huh? And if you took Isn't them away, neat? they were happy to see them go. I'll be doggone. Um, now, this, this is interesting down here because you talked to me about sometimes you have to build a garden, right? Right. And, and what you had out here was you, you got a lot of shade, and you had turf grass out here that wasn't thriving. Right, we had a problem. It was so much shade and the tree roots were so near the surface that grass, it didn't do well. Yeah. We aerated, we overseeded, it still was poor. Yeah. So um, we tried to make lemonade and use this shady situation and established um, this spring, we transplanted out Pachysandra from our beds to here. So these, these green clumps are Pachysandra. Pachysandra, great ground cover for shade or filtered light. Um, nice, low, not super invasive, but it will send out runners and cover this whole area, it probably will. within a couple years. Really? Okay. And, and then it'll look, it'll look like this. It'll look more be like one that. ice green mm -hmm. cover, huh? Yeah. Does it flower? It does flower, small white flowers uh -huh. in, in the, the summer. Spring? Oh, um, in the late summer. spring, early summer. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So you'll have, you'll have nice ground cover here. And uh, you won't, of course, you won't need all this mulch then either, will you? Because well, it, it take helps care of it that. spread. That mulch really helps it root out mm -hmm. and helps it spread quicker. Yeah. These benches are new. The benches are new. Nice. Those are from the um, Illinois Corrections Department. They have an Industries Department. Yeah. These are from recycled milk cartons. So from recycled milk cartons. Recycled milk cartons. Okay. Cartons. So that all that plastic that we recycle, it does mm -hmm. go to has a, a purpose. It actually That's gets right. gets used. Okay. Um, looking this way now. These, you come down here, and this used to be a place probably where you wouldn't want to put a bench because there was nothing to see down here. But there is now because you've right. got these lovely new statues. We're looking at, at winter. This is the, or, or is this the winter stand? This is fall. This is fall. Okay. Mm -hmm. why, why is it fall? Um, the harvest, she's kind of gathered there. The um, sheaves of corn and leaves mm -hmm. indicates the harvest time of the uh -huh. year. Now she looks ancient, like, like a Roman statue. Well, they're made from a Roman process. Uh -huh. um, they're made from crushed, um, they use mortar and then crushed limestone, which is what the Romans used to make their roads. Uh -huh. We've also given her an aging process. We've added her, brush whole milk on her, uh -huh. and it helps colonize and age her, which you can see yeah. um, she looks like she's been here quite a while. And, and these were made recently by an Illinois company? These are from an Illinois company. Um, Shadows, it's from Pomona, Illinois, uh -huh. Long Shadow Garden Creations, uh -huh. and um, it's a beautiful place to visit, and they make really high quality products. Pomona, they ship Illinois, all over. Pomona, Long, down in wine country. Long Shadow, yes. Long Shadow, mm -hmm. okay. And they, uh, did they underwrite them for you? They underwrote them very generously, and then also um, the Springfield Civic Garden Club gave us a grant. And this them. is summer? Yes. And it looks like he might be, or she might be holding grapes. I guess from Pomona down in wine country, uh -huh. she's got quite a harvest going she on. She does. She really does. And they do pick those in late summer. Uh -huh. Pick the grapes uh -huh. in late summer. Uh -huh. Okay. 
And this young lady is, this is spring. This is spring. And she looks, I'm not sure what she's got there. She looks I, like, I, I don't know if these are beehives or what she's I'm got. Not sure she, I think she's got some, um, it almost looks like some ranunculus or some early spring bulbs. Uh-huh. Okay, she's spring, right? Yeah. Oh, while, we're, while we're looking at her, this is a very interesting plant. And you've got a number of these right along here. Uh -huh. what, 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 what is this These called? are some of the um, variegated azaleas. And these were from um, Spring Meadows. Um, nursery uh -huh. and these are some of their variegated azaleas and we have a lot of azaleas here these are the only ones that are um, variegated I've never seen them before and they'll have kind of a um, rosy pink do, do they um, have the same beautiful full glamorous bloom that an mm -hmm, azalea mm -hmm. has yep, they should do. do the same thing but give you a little extra bonus with those they, well, um, they, they look a little more interesting in the mm -hmm. off season and it'll give a little color because we need color down here under all the shade yeah you know we've got some color from the chartreuse foliage on the hosta yeah. the variegated azaleas and we probably will do something in front of them that pops color the hostas, these these bright and dark green big leaf plants mm -hmm. here, they love it down here. Don't they, they love it here. They were just put in last year, so this wow. you know the following year, most perennials and hostas included yeah. aren't there yet. The following year and the third year is when you'll really see them yeah. grow. And, and, and then you can break those up and, and transplant those mm -hmm. just about anywhere. That's going to be one of our big projects this fall because yeah. we have some that are really filled and it'll keep them more vigorous yeah. if we divide them. And this would be the, this last statue here. She's facing the wrong way for us, but this is winter, huh? This is winter. She's kind of bundled up with that little drape, and um, she's looking to greet people as yeah. they come down from the other direction. Oh, they're very, they're very impressive, and, and they're, they're very cute, too. You know, you, they, the faces are uh -huh. real cute. Uh -huh. Yeah, you yeah. can do a lot of study and decide if those faces are smiling or serious yeah. or what they're looking for. That's right, for, so. that's right. Very moody. Thanks, Harry. This is nice down here. Thanks for coming. Harry, these columns, now they're not brand new, but they haven't been here forever either. Have no, they? these columns um, were removed from the back garden when we replaced the trellis. And these were the uh, corner pieces of the trellis, and they didn't feel they were sound enough to make another 30-year um, structure. So we've brought them out here to um, be a backdrop to what people see when they look in and a backdrop to uh -huh. what we see when we look out. Yeah, and it looks like you're ready to to, now there's nothing planted in there yet, but it looks like you've got planters situated on top so that you can do that when you want to. These are anchored down and then next spring we have large paper mache planters that we're going to plant to kind of give us a cascading effect from the annual. So these will give a real color backdrop. We'll put them on some drip irrigation and they should be You make it, um, you make it all round. sound so easy. We'll see, we'll you see next year, like, won't we? What, you, do you, are you looking for an annual that will kind of flow down and hang? Um, an annual that'll give you some structure, kind of to give you a ball effect, but then also to cast it, cascade okay. down and soft. And what might that be? What, oh, we could do something with the surefire begonia, the vista petunias, some lantana. Um, we'll probably try and color coordinate throughout. <laughs> <laughs> color cord. Color yeah. cord. Most of us are just lucky to get something to grow. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is this catches your eye just right off the bat. That is one glamorous flower there. They're pretty terrific. These are some of the hardy hibiscus, um, and this is from the summerific series mm -hmm. from Proven Winners. Oh, look at the and, inside. I mean, they're amazing. Brilliant. These flowers can be six to eight inches in size. Uh -huh. I don't know what it is, but this year I've seen them all over town, and they look great regardless of variety. Mm -hmm. Um, they are hardy, and we've had really great luck with them overwintering. Um, they've got them down in size a bit, so they're more like the three to five feet. Mm -hmm. So they make a great backdrop. Now he's just about finished blooming, right? He's mm -hmm. late summer and or, or mid oh, to late summer. Oh, these flower. That's another great thing about them. They flower from midsummer till frost. So you can see there's still buds coming. Mm -hmm. They don't last real long. This was probably yesterday's flower, mm -hmm. but there's still buds coming. Yeah. So we'll probably have this color. This one's just to opening up, I take it, huh? Just opening today. Okay. Uh -huh, yeah. What about right behind it? What are these bugle flowers? Right here, these are some um, flowering tobacco. Flowering and tobacco. And you can see when you touch the, the foliage or look at it, it's what the foliage looks like on tobacco they harvest. Um, these are fragrant flowers. These are really for us an annual, but an annual that reseeds itself, mm -hmm. almost to the point of being a little weedy. So we do have to pull these a lot, but they make such a great um, specimen for fall. They're yeah. a neat plant to have around. Yeah, they are. And right behind it, the bees are loving that dark blue. Right. This is Caryopteris, false spirea a great plant because it has the nice chartreuse foliage mm -hmm. and then when those blue flowers um, flowers set on that foliage they just pop 
Wow. And the bees love them, so it's you know, a great You know, that's an uncommon color, too. You don't see that color in flowers. Blue in the garden is pretty yeah, desirable. Yeah, it yeah. really is. And the bees just, boy, they're just having a feast, mm -hmm. aren't they? Wow. And just, just to the left again, you see there's a large bank of those, uh, of that same of that same plant. We've used a lot. We've tried to group things in threes or fives to get that mm -hmm. effect from them when you mm -hmm. get in flower. Oh, that's terrific. And then as we go, keep going down the line here, we can see that this area out here, lo these, these azaleas love this, this variegated azalea. They, they love it here, don't they? They've done really well. These plants were all just put in this spring. These were plants from spring meadows, mm -hmm. and they were their stock plants, which means they'd take cuttings off of them, and they rotate those in and out. So this mm -hmm. was a year for these to wow. find a home, so they made a great donation to it. Mm. You, you've got some other new things here, um, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about, particularly, I'm thinking about a fireplace mantle mm -hmm. that you found in the mansion, mm -hmm. I think in the basement. In the basement. Right. Um, and, and some other things, some other plans that you've got. So okay. let's go that way and take let's a look at that. Let's check it out. Well, Harry, if, if you go wandering around in a mansion that was built in 1855 uh -huh. or 50, whatever, uh -huh. yeah. I mean, you're going to find some stuff. Uh -huh. Because <laughs> a lot of people have been in there and uh -huh. they've, they've stuffed a lot of stuff that they didn't uh -huh. have use for down in the basement or uh -huh. in the closets or wherever. And you found this down in the basement, didn't you? This fireplace mantle, it's an iron um, fireplace mantle. It was down in the basement. <laughs> So we tried to um, come up with a tasteful way to utilize it. It yep. was no longer needed inside. So we kind of did the fire pit approach to use when people were on the patio. Yeah, yeah well, you didn't have a fire pit out That's here. Right. Everybody's got to have a fire pit. This is, but when you say, boy, this thing was made, listen to this. I yeah. mean, this is cast iron. Yeah, it's very heavy. Um, it took about four of us to lift it, and yeah. that's lifting it, you know, from a cart to here. Yeah. So we did have to lift it up the stairs to get it back here. Wow. It was white or an ivory color, uh -huh. and we um, painted it with a heat-resistant black paint. Yeah, and then and then you and your your guys built built the firebox. For we it. built a firebox. Uh -huh. We've got to get a grate yet for the top, and then we've got to get a log <laughs> rack inside. Yeah. We seem to come up with plenty of wood you, as trees age. Or you never or have a shortage down. of wood here plenty because you're constantly fighting. You're constantly cutting things back. Aren't aren't you? Changing, um, yeah. you know, things age and trees age and there's yeah. times when they're ready to, to be removed. Yeah. So yeah. we have plenty. Well, this is neat. Now you can have fires on the patio. Mm -hmm. And th uh, this brings to my attention to these plants here and, and to, to what to how you guys do all this. This, what's the name of this, this uh, leaf? These are um, chartreuse calicasias. Calicasia. Um, basically, they're related to the elephant ear plants, which are so showy mm -hmm. and striking here. This is a, a chartreuse variety, and the great thing about them is, especially for this location, is they will take sun or shade mm -hmm. conditions, and we've got both right here, mm -hmm. so they've thrived and done well with some baby winged begonia. Uh, and what you'll try to do is you'll try to get this through the winter by moving it to a greenhouse. Right. Um, the first frost, hard frost or freeze, will come out and cut the stems down, and then we'll take the bulbs up and move them to the garage to dry a bit, and then ship them to the greenhouse. Yeah. For their and home. then in the spring they come back out. They come back started. And they probably grow um, bigger, don't they? Uh, they do. Yeah. Um, the elephant ears in particular start as a little bulb like a baseball, mm -hmm. and ours are now uh, probably about three feet long. <laughs> so they really put on the growth. Wow. Harry, decades ago everybody had to plant yew hedges. Everybody had and these. yeah, and they, they were standard, and now everybody's trying to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. And when you when you tackled that yew hedge that was where those green feathery plants are, mm -hmm. you you fi figured out why people try to get rid of them. <laughs> well, we found out as we began the removal process, which they had rooted into the brick, rooted into the wall, so oh, we not only goodness. had to take out the yews, then we had to do some wall repair. Yeah, oh, they just get so big, and mm -hmm. the roots are so stubborn right. and, and strong. So what is the plant now that's in place of the ewes? What are those, those are a type of camiciparis called yellow ribbon, yellow and ribbon. they'll be a more appropriate size plant. They should get about four foot. Um, we can trim them. They'll give us great backdrop color. Mm -hmm. Another really cool thing about them is we can use them for our greens for the Christmas um, planters. So oh, okay. we'll trim them by harvesting for the planters. I see. Okay, now right in front of these, these butterfly bushes, what a time to see these. They're going nuts. The butterflies and bees just love these yeah, the past. Ten days they have been just thick back here. These are probably one of my favorite shrubs that we had um, from the shrub donation. These are called Lo and Behold Butterfly Bush. Mm -hmm. And they're a more compact variety and they have flowered um, from summer 
until it freezes. Mm -hmm. and, and you have seen the monarchs, the monarchs that, who everybody's complaining about their scarcity. You've seen them in, We've in, seen in great numbers here. here huh? Yeah, That's monarchs, good. painted ladies, mm -hmm. bumblebees, honeybees, mm -hmm. you know, as a source of um, nectar depletes. They're seeing these and, and just really working them. And, and these will come back year after year, actually bigger, won't they? They're perennials. How mm -hmm. big they come back depends on the winter. These may freeze to the ground. They may freeze back. They may freeze halfway mm -hmm. back. Kind of depends yeah. on how severe the winter yeah. is. Now, you and I are standing in a, in a grassy spot here. Um, pretty soon, this is going to be, you're going to arrange to have this covered so that you'll have like an arbor area mm -hmm. here. We're working with Lincoln Land Community College in their higher education and hopefully they're going to be able to help us with some trellises that'll help give us some scale and define this area. Uh -huh. They're modeled a little bit after some trellises at the Monet home in Paris. So they'll give us some um, birdie blue, birdie green shades. Yeah. So the students there, they, they, they're constructing these things for you. Huh? They'll okay. construct, um, they're going to start the project in October. Yeah. So they've got the initial ideas, but they'll come and do a site in survey. In the spring they're going to put it up? No, this fall, yeah. This fall? This fall, yeah. Terrific. Well, listen, I can't, I can't leave here without going down here. I love okay. this area down here. Um, and, and I love your, you know, I, I like water gardens because uh -huh. I, can't, I can't do them. But I love to watch other people do them. And this is just, just what you've done down here in this in this space is, well, this looks like, this looks like one of the most famous formal gardens in the world. It's just gorgeous down here. Well, this is a good time to visit because at this time of year the water is clearer, um, the fish are still active, um, the plants back in this garden, the water plants do better than the other ones. So we trade in and out. Uh -huh. um, when they get so big back here, we move them to the big garden, and have still the sound of the water splashing oh, and all gosh. this color from the wave petunia planters. Yeah, yeah. And are these, these are wave petunias here that I've got? These my... are wave petunias okay. and there's zinnias. Um, there's purple fountain grass to give you some height and a wonderful display in the fall. Oh, man. Um, Dusty Miller. <laughs> so pretty simple, but, but good combination. Well, I don't know how simple, but I'll tell you, it sure is beautiful. You've got some fall varieties too. Now, are, are these late summer? These are some of the variegated tall flocks. Mm -hmm. um, these really flower mainly in the summer, um, but they also, if you deadhead trim them back, they mm -hmm. will give you some um, fall color also. Wow. And then right behind it again, we've got that hardy hibiscus, don't we? That's the same hardy oh. hibiscus. There's also a red one down there behind it called Cranberry Crush, which has another great color, a well, little to smaller. To see that, we have to, look, we have to look over that way, don't we? But yeah. still the it's same a little large dark. flowers. Yeah. Oh my goodness. The hedges um, have recently been trimmed back here. We trimmed in the spring, but they put on so much growth, so mm -hmm. we've trimmed them again. Now, is that a boxwood variety? That's boxwood, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and those have been rejuvenated. They were getting pretty tall, but we rejuvenated them. Mm -hmm. So this is in their second year, and, and we're basically getting the head shape yeah. going. This was a really good year for annuals, wasn't it? It was a good year. Was yeah. it because it was a little cooler than, than Cooler. Normal? Um, more ample rainfall. So yeah, it was a great year. Let's go sure. look at some of okay. this after you. Well, Harry, your garden here is a signature garden and that just doesn't happen anywhere, does it? There aren't many of them. There aren't a lot of signature gardens. They are a designation made by proven winners um, to showcase their product. And the great thing about proven winners is they have great lines of annuals, perennials, and shrubs. Mm -hmm. So you have lots to draw from for mm -hmm. your garden. What's the other nearest signature garden to where we are? Um, the nearest one to us would either be the um, Governor's Mansion in Kentucky mm -hmm. or um, a garden up on Mackinac Island. Wow, okay, so, so it's, it's quite an honor, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, beautiful. And those mums, look at what you've got, those yellow the mums. The mums, yeah, they just pop out. and give you that fall oh, color man. and kind of and, set everything off. And they're all planted. They're not in pots. You've planted those, No, we planted you? those, uh -huh. yeah. and they'll still give us several weeks of color. And I mentioned we were going to talk about annuals here, and, and you just, this, this fountain area just stuffed with them. <laughs> yeah, lots wonderful. of good um, ones. And, you know, it's mid-September, and by that time of year, annuals can look pretty rough. Yeah. And we don't have the budget to do a change out, so we try and go with annuals that are going to keep performing yeah. for us through the summer and fall. Well, it looks like you've been successful this year. This was a good year because it wasn't so hot and it wasn't so dry, was it? Just right. Look how these things have grown. Yeah, this is the vertigo grass. This was started with a six inch pot in around May 1st. Incredible. And then the um, Dean Day Smith Lantana, the um, Vista Fuchsia Petunia, 
And this is a real good example of a, a thriller, a filler, and a spiller, <laughs> which is a way people can easily make a their thriller, planting. A thriller, a, a spill, filler, a spiller, uh -huh. and a filler and a spiller. A filler and a spiller. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. And that's how you get. The, that's how it looks layered, yeah. doesn't it? Simple it, way to kind of help you remember to get all those types of plants. Yeah. In there. Yeah. Wow. What a gorgeous, a gorgeous uh, tour you've given us. And uh, I, I might want to mention here too, while we're here, uh, you know, we've run into a lot of folks here today that are just walking the grounds. And that's okay to do because on Tuesday and Thursday and on Saturday morning, the executive mansion grounds are open to the public. You just go to the gate and get buzzed in and this is yours to enjoy. With another Illinois Story in Springfield, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.